It's easy to fall in love with a place like this. Four centuries ago, European seafarers were enchanted. Now, Hollywood stars like to chill here. North Island is a small granite island in the Seychelles that boasts one of the world's most exclusive and expensive resorts. A night here costs more than 2,000 euros. Prince William and his bride, Kate Middleton, spent their honeymoon here. The island used to be plagued by rats and wild cats, but not anymore. In 1997, a foreign travel company bought the island and turned it into a luxury retreat and nature reserve. Everything run on North Island is done in, with environment in the background. The main reason the island was bought was to rehabilitate the island to what it looked like before humans settled on the island. So there is great potential for this island to be a key biodiversity hotspot in the Seychelles. There's a high level of biodiversity in the Seychelles and a large number of endemic or unique native species. Among them are the blue pigeon, the white eye, and the white-tailed tropic bird. For ornithologists, the Seychelles are a treasure trove. Lindsay Chong Seng is a biologist, and he's an expert on the animals and plants of the archipelago. It's the main thing for me. I, I like to see the, the endemics. And, and, uh, and I think uh, before you can appreciate what you have, you need to know about it. And a lot of these things, are, they are so cryptic, and only the specialist knows about it. I'm trying to get them into mainstream. Lindsay Chong Seng teaches at the University of Seychelles in Victoria, the capital on the main island of Mahé. Most of the country's 90,000 people live there. The Seychelles gained independence from Britain in 1976. Its colonial heritage is still very present. You can see it in the architecture, cars drive on the left, and the name of the capital, Victoria, is a dead giveaway. The people involved in biodiversity management here meet regularly at a hotel in Victoria. Among them is a team from the United Nations Biodiversity Finance Initiative, Biofin. It takes considerable amounts of money and other resources to maintain and protect nature. What does it cost to really do biodiversity conservation effectively? How many consultants do you need? How many vehicles do you need? What is the cost if you're going to expand the protected area network? How do you implement sustainable fisheries? What actions do you need? Every detail of that um, is mapped out and costed like, like you do a budget. That may all sound a little dry, but what Biofin does is crucial. Public and private sector players have to be identified and have to get involved. One project is about achieving financial autonomy for the National Parks Authority. The idea is to redirect revenue from tourism and visits to the marine parks towards biodiversity. Biodiversity is very much um, what we sell. It's the beauty of the island, it's the fish in the ocean, the coral reefs um, in the mountains, the birds, the plants. So without biodiversity, without a healthy marine and terrestrial environment, the economy of Seychelles has got no chance. This country will not be a viable country. The beauty and diversity of nature is what draws foreign tourists, more than 200,000 a year. Tourism is the country's main source of income but not mass market holiday makers. There are no huge hotels or resort complexes. The focus is on rich people and discreet luxury retreats. At one expensive hotel on the island of Preslin that describes itself as eco-friendly, rare hawksbill and green turtles breed on the unspoiled beach. But right nearby is an 18-hole golf course. 
Environmentalists protested when it was laid out, but to no avail. Commercial interests can collide with concern for nature. The Valle du Mai nature reserve nearby is not under threat. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a large and well-preserved palm forest with endemic species such as the coco de mer. Its fruits are huge. They can weigh up to 25 kilograms and contain the largest seeds of any plant in the world. I get very proud when I think of the coco de mer. I think it's, it's the thing that really um, epitomizes the Seychelles. There's an added responsibility. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the rest of the world. And because it's only found there, you are the guardian for the rest of the world. So you have to make sure that it doesn't become uh, extinct. This sense of guardianship and respect of nature are widespread among the people of the Seychelles. It was the first state to enshrine nature conservation in its constitution. That includes its territorial waters and the seafloor. Its coral reefs have experienced major die-offs, but efforts have been undertaken to revive them. Special glue is used to attach coral to the rocks. If you lose the diversity of life on those coral reefs or around in the water, um, Seychelles becomes just another uh, beach, and there are plenty of beaches in the world. As we know more and have more resources, we should be able to turn this place really in one of the best paradise that you can find on Earth. Many might say the Seychelles are already a paradise, but either way, it will take work and money to make sure the islands remain beautiful and the environment healthy for a long time to come. <laughs>